Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to session 5 of training and development course. In this session, we will cover various topics such as overview of e-learning platform, integrating technology into training programs and benefits and challenges of digital training. So, before we begin, I would just like to throw some light on what these e-learning platforms are. So, e-learning platforms are basically the digital tools or softwares designed to deliver the educational content and facilitate online learning experience. They provide a wide range of features including multimedia content, interactive exercises, assessments and progress tracking. So, what are the various theories and principles behind these e-learning platforms or what is the theory and principle behind the e-learning is something that we are going to throw some light on. We will begin with the first theory called as cognitive load theory. So, this principle suggests that intrinsic cognitive load which is the mental effort required to perform a specific task and extraneous cognitive load which is the mental effort imposed by the way the task is delivered must be balanced to promote effective learning. Basically about the mental efforts required to perform the task, the way in which the task is delivered, the imposed by the way the task is delivered, it must be. So, these are the principles that have to be borne in mind while delivering content for e learning. The second theory is what you call as dual. So, when we talk about dual working theory or dual coding theory, that proposes that separate channels of working memory process auditory and visual information during any lesson. So, it suggests that multimedia materials which combines auditory verbal information with visual information requires the cognitive load imposed on working memory and improve learning outcomes. So, it is suggestive of the fact that multimedia materials which combine auditory as well as uh, visual information reduce the cognitive load imposed on the working memory and therefore, it facilitates better learning and improves the learning outcomes. Then the third principle is about personalization. This principle suggests that presenting the words in a conversational and informal style can help enhance effective learning. So, the principle has been shown to be effective in several studies including Cartel's study with 89 college students. Then it is about academic self-regulation. This principle emphasizes the importance of helping the students develop confidence in their ability to perform well in e-learning courses. It is about digital communication tools. The principle suggests and includes the use of basic digital communication tools with visuals, text and audio to demonstrate learning content in ways that can help to reduce the cognitive load and improve the learning outcomes. Then we have another principle called as connectivism. So, when it comes to connectivism, the principle emphasizes how various kinds of technologies can be used and designed to create new learning experiences. 
This theory suggests that e-learning systems should be devised and designed to provide adequate support for integration of content, communication and collaboration tools as well as to integrate all activities that correspond to pedagogical models and instructional strategies. So, these are the principles which are based on cognitive science research and demonstrate how the use and design of educational technology can create new learning experiences and promote learning efficiencies, engagement and motivation. So, if we really want to bring about and promote the learning efficiencies, engagement of people at work and motivation among the trainees, uh, these principles can really help us in serving this purpose. Now, these principles are based on uh, cognitive science research as I mentioned. Now, we will just quickly have a look around the various e-learning platforms. We have several e-learning platforms which are into play like for example, the very first being learning management systems. Now, what are these learning management systems? These are the centralized platforms that manage and deliver online courses, track learners progress an individual is able to track and monitor his pro progress at his pace of learning and administer the assessments also as a part of these learning management systems. So, many organizations use learning management systems to foster a culture of learning within the organization. Then we have virtual classroom platforms. So, virtual classroom platforms are the meeting tools that enable live instructor led training sessions interactive discussions and collaborations among the participants. So, this can be another type of e-learning platform which can be used by the organizations to foster uh, collaboration among the participants. Then we have something called as author, uh, you know we have something called as uh, you know content authoring tools. So, there are several uh, content authoring tools that is a software which can be used to create design interactive e-learning content such as multimedia presentations, videos, quizzes and simulations. So, when we combine all these things definitely uh, the learning experience of the individuals can be enhanced to a large extent and uh, therefore, it has it is something which assumes a lot of significance. So, content authoring tools can be another you know softwares which can be used to create and design interactive e-learning contents. We have several such interactive e-learning tools and content uh, development tools available these days. Now, let us have a quick look at around uh, several popular e-learning platforms which are into play. So, we will begin with the first one that is Swayam platform. So, Swayam is a digital media platform that offers a variety of courses and certifications for e-learning primarily aimed at students and teachers in India. So, it is a government of India initiative under Ministry of Human Resource Development and is designed to achieve the three cardinal principles of educational policy access, quality and equity. The platform hosts courses taught in classroom from class 9 till post graduation making them accessible to everyone, anywhere, at any time. So, the courses are very interactive, prepared by the best teachers in the country and are available free of cost to the learners in India. And uh, usually these courses are um, offered in different quadrants, video lectures especially, for example, there can be some kind of video lectures which can be there, there can be some kind of, uh, you know, Especially these video lectures are specially prepared reading material, uh, self assessment test through test and quizzes, online discussion forums for clearing a lot of doubts. So, Swayam can be a very good uh, platform for facilitating the learning experiences among the individuals at different levels. Now, we can uh, see that there are multiple e learning platforms available. To name a few, we have Moodle LMS. So, Moodle LMS is also known for being the best online learning platform for open source. Then we have another platform called as uh, Coursera. So, offers courses uh, from top educational providers worldwide. 
so if you if somebody wants to hone their skills in a specific domain or the other so they they can really go for certification programs for from coursera also so uh, they have partnered with several uh, universities of high repute and uh, several companies like ibm and google etc and uh, individuals who are willing to do some kind of certification programs uh, from the best of the uh, universities of the world they may go for the courses and they may take the courses from coursera at the completion of the course they would provide you with some kind of certifications also then another popular e learning platform is what you call as udemy so udemy is also something that provides a wide range of courses and there are diverse topics that they try to touch upon and uh, they are very very suitable for professional development and hobbies uh, hobbies uh, hobbyists also those people who want to take up the courses for the purpose of pursuing their hobby or those people who are interested in taking up some kind of professional courses or some kind of professional development courses they may do the courses from udemy so this is again a very very interesting platform a very very uh, widely used platform these days another uh, thing is what you call as skill share so skill share is something that focuses on creative skills like designing photography writing with a community driven approach so this uh, this serves an this serves as an excellent platform then we have edx which offers courses from universities and organizations covering academic professional subjects then we have something called as linkedin learning uh, this linkedin learning provides courses on various topics and is now integrated with linkedin so this was formerly linda.com which was providing several courses on different topics of interests to people and now it has integrated with linkedin and is known as linkedin learning now then we have something called as learn worlds this is again a platform which is known for its powerful e-commerce features course authoring and user analytics offering solutions for online learning and training now these platforms cater to a diverse a range of learners and offer various kinds of courses and features to enhance the learning experience for the people and to enhance the online learning experience primarily now it's very important to understand that how these e-learning platforms ensure quality now the very first aspect is the technical aspects so when we talk about this technical aspects platform platforms focus on ensuring that e-learning content function smoothly and reliably across different platforms browsers and devices so this can be the technical uh, quality uh, aspect of it then is about content relevance so when it comes to content relevance the call content quality has to be ensured and how will it happen platform pay attention to the core of online learning which includes several aspects such as the quality the relevance the practicality of information and resources provided for learning so these are the various things that we have to look at then there is some element of interactivity also so interactive uh, elements here would mean high quality content is made we have to ensure that high quality content is made now when it comes to high quality uh, content it would mean that the quality relevance practicality everything is uh, taken care of and also we have to ensure that there is more of active engagement and active interactivity among the individuals which can be done using more of elements like images then quizzes and other interactive 
activities to foster interaction and participation. So, this is about interaction or interactive uh, elements. Then is about relevance. So, one needs to keep in mind that the things have to be very, very relevant. The relevance is something which is to be taken into consideration. So, keeping content relevant is very, very crucial. So, platform use micro learning techniques to break down content to the smaller, more digestible and the more retainable bits ensuring that learners can assimilate and retain information effectively. So, for example, if you are offering a course for uh, 10 hours, may not uh, be possible that for entire set of 20, 10 hours, you are just uh, speaking and giving the lectures. Rather, you would be spending some, you would be giving some time to the people to work on some uh, content, maybe some kind of cases, some kind of readings, some kind of tutorials, etc. Then we have uh, discussions. So, encouraging discussions is one of the important elements and e-learning platforms can ensure quality by encouraging the interactions and discussions because it is believed that they play a vital role in improving the e-learning experiences. So, platforms encourage active discussions to enhance learning experience and improve the content quality. And of course, creating engaging experiences for the people to make it more memorable and uh, more enjoyable for the people by incorporating relatable and engaging elements is a must. So, this two way conversation approach ensures that the target audience resonates well with the content or the content resonates well with the target audience so on and so forth. So, by, by focusing on all these aspects, you know, e-learning platform strives to maintain high quality content and whenever we are delivering the, you know, the training using e-learning platforms, these aspects have to be taken very well care of. So, these are the things that we have to really take care of. Now, after this we move to some of the best practices for creating engaging e-learning content. Now, how to create this uh, interactive and engaging e-learning content is a very important question under consideration. There are few things that we have to bear in mind and there are few things that we have to pay attention to. The very first being know your learners. So, knowing your learners here would mean understand your audience characteristics. Now, what are the characteristics of your audience? What are the habits of your, you know, habits of your audience? What are the learning behaviors of the individuals that you are addressing or you are going to address is very, very important for you to take care of because it will help you then generate the right kind of content for your people. Then setting the clear learning objectives. Clearly define the goal of the training program is a must and needs to be addressed very, very carefully. So, when the learners get to know about the benefits that they are going to bestow, that are going to be bestowed upon them as a consequence of the training that happens is something that can create a phenomenal difference in the way they are assimilating it. So, the clear learning objectives have to co be communicated to the people. Then it is about making learning programs interactive. So, when we talk about making the learning programs interactive, incorporating more of interactive elements which we just talked about in the previous slides. For example, some interactive quizzes, some interactive games, some you know some uh, sessions for them to brainstorm, some question answer sessions, some uh, brainstorming sessions, drag and drop activities, simulations, all these things can really make people active. So, to name a few drag and drop activities is something that can really help. Adding some kind of challenges at work, then putting them into uh, some kind of interactive quizzes and maybe then uh, simulations can also be of great help. Many of the organizations are using 
virtual platforms and they are using simulative settings to keep people at work and to make the entire learning programs more impactful and more interactive also. Then is about keep courses organized. Whenever it comes to developing the e-content, the structure of the content, the structure is a must. The structure of the content has to be taken care of. You have to keep the content very, very organized and properly slide, you know, properly sliced into the content which is needed. So, organizing the content would help avoid cognitive overload and ensure that the learners can focus on key points. So, how the things are to be prioritized, how they are to be structured, what way they are supposed to be put in is all supposed to be set well in advance to ensure the better facilitation of learning with primary focus on the training. Next we have keep modules short. So, when it comes to keeping the module short, it would mean that the content has to be broken down into shorter sections because it is believed that the shorter sections would help learners engage more easily with the material. So, they would be able to better connect with the, the audience, they would be able to better connect with the training material and it is easier for them to connect with the chunks of information that coming that is coming their way. So, keeping the module short is yet another thing that has to be bared in mind. right? And then we have something called as making the courses visually appealing. So, aesthetically appealing content enhances engagement. It is always recommended to add a lot of visually appealing content. If some numbers are supposed to be uh, shown to the people, then it is always recommended that we go for several things like bar charts, pie charts, then bar diagrams or maybe the flow charts. So, all these things can be really worked out in order to make the courses visually appealing and always remember NPV in this context. Now, what does this term NPV mean? NPV here means numbers, photos and videos. So, in order to create good e-learning content, it is backed by a lot of numbers, some photos to make it visually more appealing. Aesthetics really have a vital role to play and therefore, the videos can also create a lot of difference. So, these activities can really put people to work. These people, these things really put people engaged and keep people engaged towards the content that has been designed. People always want to learn something new by means of what is going to be delivered to them. So, always try to add some kind of, ins, you know, always try to think on the lines of adding some new content. So, the courses have to be kept very short and uh, they have to be made very visually appealing. So, aesthetically if they are uh, including a lot of videos, numbers, uh, photos and some good multimedia you know presentations, those things are really going to create a lot of difference. And there are several platforms which help us in making the visuals more appealing. right? So, how to uh, take the best advantage and how to make the best advantage of those uh, platforms which are available can really make a lot of difference. Then we have incorporating meaningful interactions. So, when it comes to interactive, uh, you know, incorporating meaningful interactions, it would mean that creating the interactions that are relevant to learners experience. creating the interactions that are relevant to learners experience. Then providing uh, feedback to people. So, feedback may be provided to people through various platforms. For example, they may be given the feedback through quizzes then uh, they may be given some kind of uh, feedback through various scenarios which are given to them, then guides learners and all these things you know they help guide learners towards the correct answers and reinforces their learning. 
So, it is important for us to take care of the feedback mechanism which is present and uh, people must be adequately uh, told about their feedback in one or the other way. Right. For example, you must have seen many a times it so happens and when we are taking an interactive course some kind of e uh, content or digital uh, content which is given to us or uh, some video which is shown to us the video would not move until we answer a particular question. After we answer the question then only the moving uh, the, the video would be moving forward. So, this is one way to let you know about your progress at a certain point of time and to make you understand a certain concept before moving ahead in the course. So, there after that we may have different uh, realistic scenarios that may be created. So, we may create some kind of scenarios that mirror the real life situation which would further encourage the learners to apply their knowledge and critical thinking skills. So, people it is seen that people want to apply their brain they want to apply their minds on several realistic situations, on several realistic scenarios. So, if you are making them find out the solution to a certain problem by involving them uh, on creating some kind of realistic problems or scenarios, certainly it is going to be a great thing for people to learn and they would really admire such kind of styles. Then we have something called as fostering collaborations. So, this can be one of the best practices for creating engaging learning content. So, how can we foster collaboration? We may integrate the social elements like discussions, discussion boards and peer assessments to encourage knowledge sharing. So, this is about fostering the collaboration among the people who are working. So, if you are implementing these practices, e-learning content creators can enhance engagement among people, they would improve the learning outcomes also and create a more effective and efficient learning environment and learning experience for the people also. So, this is about uh, some of the best practices which may be used for creating more engaging e-learning content. And uh, while doing all these things, it is important for us to bear in mind that all those principles which we studied in context of e-learning have to be taken into consideration. Next, we move to a small case study which is a success story with e-learning platform. So, this is a case study, a small case let rather about an organization XYZ corporation which implemented a learning management system to deliver compliance training to its global workforce. So, by providing access to some online modules Employees completed training at their own convenience, resulting in improved compliance rates and reduced training cost. So, by means of incorporating this kind of training to their global workforce, they were able to do, they were able to help the employees attend to training programs at their own convenience in a self paced way, which finally resulted in improved compliances and reduce training costs. So, they were able to increase the productivity of the concern, they were able to increase the you know compliance rate among the individuals and also they were able to reduce the training cost associated with it. Now, this was about the short success story with e-learning platforms. So, many of the organizations can be benefited by integrating technology and by providing some kind of solutions to the problem. Now, next we move to benefits of technology integration. Now, what are the benefits that can be bestowed upon the organizations when they integrate technology into their solutions? And how can training experience be enhanced by means of technology integration? Let us have a deep dive into this phenomena. 
Let us begin with the first aspect that is enhanced teaching strategies. So, technology integration can help trainers make their lessons more fun. They can add more of challenges also and uh, this can be made by engaging the users by using more of interactive whiteboards. These days you must have seen a lot of uh, training programs are integrated are integrating the augmented reality and virtual reality into their systems to make it fun for the learners to learn something. So, this allows trainers to present content in a very dynamic way and definitely they are able to adapt to the teaching methods to suit the needs of the learners. So, people enjoy new technologies, they enjoy the real time experiences by means of the virtual uh, trainings that are imparted to them or maybe by means of some kind of virtual platforms also. For example, if you are integrating a lot of virtual reality, augmented reality into the system, then training becomes more fun and uh, definitely it is, uh, it is likely that the takeaways of the training or the learning outcomes are better achieved by means of such kind of training program. So, this was about enhanced teaching strategies. You need to think about some innovative strategies to put people to training and make it fun for them. Then we have personalized learning. So, when we talk about personalized learning, organizations can offer a range of digital tools and applications that can be customized to suit the individual needs. So, this approach ensures that everyone learns only what is relevant to their training practices, what is relevant to them from improving their methods to incorporating the technology in their training. Next is everybody wants customized solution to their problems. So, this can be a wonderful way to uh, solve the problem. For example, many of the training programs what they do is uh, they would have whole host of topics and uh, you know, if an individual is facing some kind of troubles in certain topics, he would just take those topics and would want to attend to the quizzes related to those topics only. So, he has that flexibility of customizing the quizzes to suit the requirements of that individual. So, this is called as personalized learning. Then we have something called as improved student engagement. Here it can be training engagement also. So, improved trainee engagement could only happen if we are making use of more interactive whiteboards, we are incorporating virtual augmented reality, even gamification can be an excellent way to make trainings more fun and engaging to the individuals. Many uh, tools are there, many of the ed tech tools are there which allow trainers to present cont content in a very dynamic way to make teaching more fun and engage engaging to suit the requirements of the people. Then we have constructed feedback by means of uh, technology. Uh, the trainers can provide constructive on the spot feedback to their employees or the trainees. So, they get to know about their training uh, feedback there and then and this facilitates better learning for them because uh, they are using a lot of platforms and uh, apps also which can be used to not only grade but also to design and deliver several things like there can be some uh, applications which can be there to de design and deliver the quizzes, the assignments and other kind of assessments like for example, rubrics can be there. So, these tools provide trainers with useful data and insights which further allows them to give trainee constructive feedback. So, this can be one of the ways they get to know about their scores, they get to know about their track of progress, they are able to keep a better track of their progress by means of constructive feedback and uh, this further keeps them motivated to learn in a better fashion. Then is about access to distance learning. Technology enables distance learning providing trainees with greater flexibility and access to a wide range of information resources both in and out of the training environment. So, this is about access to distance learning. Then access to information, technology makes it easier for trainees to access a wide range of information 
both in and out of the training environment. It fosters more collaborative uh, culture. Technology can make collaborations more effective by enabling trainees to work together remotely and share resources. So, they can work remotely and share the resources also. And of course, apart from sharing resources, besides sharing resources, they can share their ideas also. So, some kind of social bonds can also be created by means of the technology integration. Then as I have been fo focusing upon training uh, progress tracking, so technology can help trainers track their progress more effectively. They can keep a tap of their progress by the visual exhibits. By means of visual exhibits, they get to know about their exact track of progress and uh, the time which it took or the time taken by them to reach to a certain level of expertise, enabling them to identify the areas where tra trainees really need attention where they are struggling and uh, you know providing them the support as and when needed. Now we move to benefits of digital training. There are several benefits that it bestows. Number one is about flexibility and convenience. So the very first benefit of uh, digital training is that the people can do it at their own self-paced way, at their own self-paced uh, way the learning may happen. It uh, fosters a lot of flexibility among them and it provides them a lot of convenience to do everything at their own convenience. Then they are able to uh, enhance their skills. Anybody across the globe can think of enhancing their skills and empowerment by taking the, uh, you know, taking the advantage of digital training programs which are available and definitely it enhances the opportunities to uh, acquire new skills, new knowledge sets, new abilities and ensures them to stay up to date with the technological advancements and market trends also. Then personalized learning paths can be established for them. Personalized digital training offers flexible learning paths based on individual needs and interest. So depending upon uh, it, the learning experience can be customized to suit to the requirements of individual trainees. Then consistent training material is there. Online training ensures standardized and consistent material to all the important elements which can be fetched at any point of time. Element uh, of consistency reduces any kind of, uh, I mean reduces or say eliminates the variations in the delivery content. So the content is consistent for all the uh, trainees and it can, can be, you know, can be made accessible at any point of time. And therefore, the uh, consistent training material is something that has a vital role to play. Then it's about measurable result and analytics. So when we talk about measurable results and analytics, the digital training programs offer detailed and insights into employees' progress. And at times, you get to know about your progress vis-a-vis -vis your competitors' progress. So there are several such platforms available by means of which you can get to know about your standing vis-a-vis -vis the other competitors or other people taking up the same training in comparison to them you can get to know about your standing also. Definitely it allows the employers to measure the return on investment of training program also. So everything can be quantified and some kind of quantification of results can also happen as a result of your uh, these analytics and uh, measurable results. Next is cost effectiveness. So, e-learning is a cost effective training solutions, eliminating the need of expensive on-site facilities wherein you have to go physically and attend to the training programs. Uh, it involves a lot of logistics cost, it involves a lot of arrangements and it, it also, you know, restricts the people to take up uh, those things because of uh, the time constraint, because of other resources constraints. But, uh, Digital learning is something that can be very, very easily taken up even from the remote locations and uh, can be taken up in a remote way also. So this way it is very, very cost effective and uh, more effective. So then we have efficient learning progress tracking. So when we talk about efficient learning progress tracking, online training allows employers to easily track key metrics about their progress giving them very, very insightful information about 
their performance and how have they been able to utilize the resources. So, about resource utilization and performance of the individuals they are able to keep a very good track of what they are doing. Then is about education on demand. So, digital training provides employees with access to up to date content. They are able to get the information on up to date content. At any point of time uh, the uh, you know the uh, knowledge retention might happen by providing employees with a safe and comfortable learning environment. Uh, positively impacting their motivation and achievement of course. Then employee engagement and knowledge retention may be increased by means of digital training. There are several challenges which are faced for uh, you know especially in context of digital training. At times the employees are overwhelmed to take up the training program and uh, nearly half of the di digital training programs and initial vocal vocational educational and training focus on strengthening teacher training. It highlights the importance of supporting educators in adapting to digital tools. So, creating change champions can really alleviate this overwhelm. So, we have to be very very particular about these things. Then another challenge which may come can be the uh, can be because of the device failure. So, this is one of the significant issues that is prominent in digital training. Then uh, definitely people uh, often struggle with a lot of uh, concerns related to self discipline. So, they have to be very very self disciplined because it is uh, something which is self directed in uh, nature, it is something which is self paced in nature. So, self discipline is again an important concern, this is this poses a very big challenge especially in digital learning platforms. Then we have communication and engagement, communication and engagement uh, again is a very big challenge because many people are not able to find it very interactive and uh, they feel that it is it's lacking something engaging engagement. So, this has to be backed up with a lot of uh, such technological tools which can really facilitate better engagement and communication. Then digital divide, so bridging the digital divide is uh, very very crucial for ensuring that it is accessible to all. Again it is a very big challenge in itself. Then is about education's gap. So, integrating digital skills in education uh, and uh, sensitizing the people is something that is essential to prepare uh, the trainers uh, and trainees adequately. So, strengthening the digital competencies can really do a lot of wonder. So, this was about uh, the various challenges that are faced. Next we move to use of gamification in e-learning. So, this is something which is uh, gaining momentum today, it is called as gamification. It is something that can be used to make e-learning more engaging. So, we try to incorporate some game like elements and uh, mechanisms into online learning platforms. So, gamification in online learning or e-learning is something that is uh, picking up and it is gaining momentum today. So, there are various elements which are used for facilitating uh, a better learning using gamification and they can be you know achievement badges. So, the moment an individual achieves something he receives he or she receives achievement badges. Then there can be leaders board also leadership boards also they get some kind of points on learning something. Then there are some progress indicators by means of which they are able to keep a track of their real time progress. Then there are mini games, there are quizzes, there are interactive quizzes, there are many such things which are there. So, gamification in e-learning is not about creating full fledged video games, but rather about enhancing the learning experience by making it more fun and engaging. So, that people learn in a very light manner without any excessive load on the working memory of the individual. For example, we have various features these days like leadership boards by means of which a lot of healthy competition can be fostered. I will just tell you about uh, how leadership boards uh, help. For example, there are 5 questions which are given to all the people who are attending the training uh, program at a certain point of time and uh, after an individual answers the first questions on the board itself it would show 
your standing. Similarly, on answering upon answering 5 different questions, you would get to know about your scores and your standing and you know your standing would be totally dependent upon the accuracy rate of your, yours and also the pace with which you answer a particular question or the uh, promptness you show in answering a particular question. And towards the end, the leader is declared. So, people are really interested in seeing and attending to those things which interest them and one of them being to figure out their standing vis-a-vis -vis the other people's standing. So, some kind of badge awarding can provide them with some kind of uh, achievement and it in incentivizes their hard work also. So, there are some mechanisms which are used in e-learning gamification and they include points, badges, leaderboards, challenges, some kind of storylines are also there, rewards are there, timers are there, randomizing happens, scoring happens, unlocking uh, happens and you know lifeline happens. So, you know when you talk about uh, unlocking it would mean that uh, after you answer few questions or after you solve a certain puzzle or a riddle, the doorway to the next level opens for you or the doorway towards the next level unlocks for you. So, this is again a big motivation to the people. So, you are incorporating such kind of things to make learning uh, fun for the people. Similarly, when you talk about uh, storylines, storylines can be used to create immersive learning experience, making learning process more enjoyable and fun. So, when you talk about uh, randomizing, it is about randomizing the quiz questions to keep learners engaged. Scoring systems can be there to provide people with the real time uh, feedback about their standing and uh, about their progress, etc. Then, there is there can be an element of lifelines also. So, what does lifeline mean? Lifeline would mean uh, something to provide learners with assistance, assistance or hints when they are struggling with a task. Because when somebody is struggling with the tasks, it gives them a lot of frustration or it increases uh, uh, the chances of their being disengaged. So, lifelines would facilitate some kind of help to them and they would then be able to increase their engagement towards the training program which they are taking up. Now, there are few things that we have to bear in mind while choosing the right game mechanics for a specific e-learning course. So, it has to be started by clearly defining the learning objectives, the game mechanics should align with the objectives, then audience preferences have to be taken uh, a note of different game mechanics may appeal to different learner profiles. So, it is essential to choose the mechanics that resonate with the kind of learner you are targeting at. So, it is an important aspect which has to be uh, you know borne in mind. Then is engagement versus learning outcome, what is your motive? While game mechanics should enhance engagement, they should not overshadow the primary learning objective of the course and this is something that is very, very important. Then relevance to content has to be there. We have to ensure that the chosen game mechanics are very relevant to the content being taught. Then we have feedback and progress tracking. So, selecting the game mechanics that provide learners with clear feedback would increase their chances of being more engaged and more involved in the gamification and would foster a better learning for them. Then is about skill development. So, consider how the chosen game mechanics can help develop specific skills or knowledge areas targeted in the course. Then we have interactivity and immersion. We have to choose the game mechanics that promote interactivity and mechanics. For example, there are mechanics like storytelling, challenges, reward which can enhance the experience and keep learners active and motivated throughout. This would certainly lead to increasing their engagement level at work and they would be definitely able to achieve the learning objectives also. Then we have motivation and incentives. So, incorporating some of the game mechanics that provide motivation and incentives for learners to progress 
through the course. So, they can be reward levels, they can be achievements, they can be other kinds of uh, drive which can be uh, there to increase the learners engagement and participation also. Some best practices for integrating game mechanics into e-learning courses. So, the very first is provide your game course or lessons to others for feedback on the player experience. So, when you prepare the uh, prototype for user feedback, it must be given so that you get to know about their learning experience and uh, it becomes you know validated also, it, uh, it is validated from some other source also. Then you need to make sure that it is aligned well with the learning objectives. Uh, we have spoken a lot about choosing the right game mechanics based on the profile of the trainees and then we have to design for engagement and learning. We have to maintain the motivation and learning uh, engagement all throughout, keeping a track of the progress of the individuals and letting them know about their standing vis-a-vis -vis other competitors standing is something that is going to create a lot of difference. So, maintaining the motivation and measuring the effectiveness has to be communicated to the people. Then designing an inclusive reward system and uh, starting small and scaling up. So, when we talk about starting small and scaling up, it means we have to begin with small scale implementation and gradually scale up as you gather feedback and refine your approach, which will further help you identify the challenges and opportunities for improvement and make necessary adjustments along the way. So, you have to ensure that the learners understand the instructions and feedback also. They get to know about the instructions, they understand the clear cut instructions, the, comp the complications have to be avoided or any kind of complica complexity has to be avoided especially in context of the instructions that you are communicating to the people and also the feedback has to be given to the people in the right sense. Then using a variety of gain mechanics can really make it more immersive and engaging. Otherwise, uh, it tends to make it very, very monotonous if you are using the same mech mechanics uh, every now and then. So, you know, creating a blend of various game mechanics would always serve the purpose. Then creating a compelling narrative would uh, really engage the workers and motivate them to perform better. Here are some of the examples uh, of gamification and training, storytelling, scenario based games, scavenger hunts, scoring points, rewarding and progressing through levels, then leaderboards progress bars, certificates and incorporating gamification elements into the existing training. And last but not the uh, least, I would like to tell you about some of the contemporary technologies of e-learning. So, when we talk about the contemporary uh, technologies of e-learning, there are few things that are very, very important for us to look at, the very first being cloud computing. So, it plays a significant role in modern e-learning environment because it provides scalable and flexible and flexible infrastructure for hosting educational resources. Then second important aspect is internet of things. So, these technologies are being integrated in e-learning environments to create adaptive and personalized learning experience for people. Then we have something called as mobile learning. The use of mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets have again revolutionized e-learning like anything. So, mobile learning platforms offer flexibility and convenience, making learning more engaging and fun for the people. Then we have something called as re virtual reality and augmented reality. So, these technologies are transforming e-learning by creative immersive experiences for the people. And technologies allow the learners to engage in a better sense with content in a more visually appealing and more experiential manner. And this further enhances their experience and uh, the training is facilitated in a better manner. The retention also happens. Then use of AI that is artificial intelligence uh, in e-learning to personalize the learning paths, providing adaptive feedback and automate some of the uh, administrative tasks is something that really creates a lot of difference. 
Then we have digital tools and technologies about which we have already spoken. For example, we have multimedia resources, collaboration tools, etc., which can really make a lot of difference. Then uh, we have interactive learning techniques. There are several interactive learning techniques which can be made use of, uh, such as flipped learning. We have something called as flipped learning, which can be used. Then we have something called as blended learning principles that can be adopted. We can create uh, personalized or customized learning paths for the individuals so as to enhance their learning experience. With this, we come to the end of our uh, presentation. So, I would like to summarize the topics which have been covered so far. So, today in this lecture, we try to touch upon some of the important aspects of e-learning and technology in training, wherein the overview of e-learning platforms was provided and several aspects of integrating technology into the training programs was addressed. Thank you so much.